Tuti Island, located in Khartoum, Sudan, sits within a larger narrative that influences its cultural identity. Firstly, the palm distribution is a key indicator of climatic conditions, providing cool environments in areas with minimal rainfall. Sitting at the confluence of the White and Blue Nile that flow into the Nile River, the islander's relationship with the water is influenced by the dams miles away from its location, causing flooding and landscape erosion that alters the rituals performed on the island, which is an issue due to the close relationship with the water, which constantly replenishes the rich clay deposits on the island. The Niles sit within the Nile River Basin, a transboundary water resource, meaning that actions taken within another riparian state have an adverse effect on those downstream. Current geological processes, for example the formation of the East African Ridge System, splitting away from the source of the White Nile and the half of Ethiopia, making the Blue Nile riparian states our main focus, Egypt, Sudan and Ethiopia. In shifting landscapes, environmental and socio-cultural spheres influence how the Tutians spatialise themselves on the island. These dialogues become apparent at cultural thresholds, where the inhabitants encounter the edges of land and water. This dialogue creates an agency, transforming the perceptions of the people and how they ritualise their relationship between the land and the water. As the Tutians stay grounded within their traditional ways of life, the urban adjacencies continue to evolve their rituals in parallel with technology advancements, forming a temporal diversity across landscapes. The traditions of Tuti agriculture is being damaged through the exponential growth of flooding, which is damaging crop yields regularly. Concurrently, the surrounding urban is suffering from desertification from other farming. This begins to create cultural thresholds, which are formed through a dialogue of temporal diversity. Under ritual ambiguity, rituals associated at the thresholds between land and water shift due to frequent and inconsistent flooding, resulting from climate change and activities along the Nile. Food economy and social structures become insecure as the infrastructure fluctuates between land and water. The landscape is relatively young in terms of spatio-temporal language, so the atavistic quality of the site appears more as traces on the surface as opposed to a deeply layered unconsciousness like our project last year. The introduction of Tuti Bridge in 2008 has not only introduced the other to the island, but has caused the bank erosion to pivot where it meets the ground, consuming the agricultural grain. However, one trace remains persistent, which we identified as the agricultural line that connected subsidiary pathways across the landscape. This production of the landscape creates conditions for intervention, thus defining our site not as a deeply reproduced landscape, but a prequel of sorts to our spatio-temporal methodology, creating the conditions for history to persist rather than allowing the spatio-temporal landscape to be eradicated. Two vernacular technologies are integrated in the building programme. The first surrounding clay and its versatility in not only brick making but pottery, especially zeer pots. These devices provide natural cooling for the interior drinking water and the external environment. Another intergenerational craft is palm weaving, provided by the native date palms. We came across a potential of palm ash to supplement cement, forming palmcrete, when researching contemporary sustainable building materials to mitigate the inevitable use of concrete in wider developments. Date pit ash has been tested by others in clay bricks to absorb water pollutants which is pertinent in a flooding landscape with microplastics. The plan breaks away from our previous linear form. Instead of aligning self and other on the tooting grid, the deconstructivist form abstracts the plan based on the aforementioned agricultural traces and alignments with the grid of the bridge, juxtaposing the tooting alignment with their island. The lower level is embedded within the landscape carving out the sand and soil that is continually infilled to prevent water reaching the bridge. The building embeds itself within the ground, bringing people into rather than over the skin of the landscape. Both water and sand flows or blows into the building at particular thresholds to highlight the fragile condition of the landscape. The upper levels frame the surrounding landscape, whether these are the Nile rivers, Tuti Island or Greater Khatib. The design is composed of four building components, plastic reproduction, clay production, the scenotaph, and palm production.